Hey everybody, welcome. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the refresh token. We've worked with the access token over the last couple of videos. This is basically how you prove that you've logged in and you have access to the site. Well, this is going to expire fairly quickly and nobody wants to have to log in every couple of minutes, for example. Now, that time can be configured on the back end, so it doesn't have to be a very short period of time. But if it was the case that the access token expired every five minutes, you would have to log in every five minutes on your application. Well, typically applications are built so that you log in and you will stay logged in as long as you're on that website until you get off of that website in a certain period of time has elapsed. This is what the refresh token allows you to do. Basically what's going to happen is the refresh token will give you a new access token every couple of minutes so you don't have to log in over and over and over again. The refresh token is going to have a little bit longer lifetime. Let's go with the example of a day. So as long as you visit the website within a day and get a new access token using your refresh token, you will still be logged into the site. If you wait too long, well, it's going to kick you out and you have to get a new access token and a new refresh token. Now, anytime you use your refresh token to get a new access token, it's also going to give you a new refresh token as well. So basically, if the refresh token, say it lasts a day, well, that day period of time is going to refresh every single time that you use your refresh token. So it's going to not expire until a day after your last moment of activity on that website. So there's various ways you could do this. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple and just create a loop that's going to execute every couple of minutes to get a new access token and a new refresh token. Now there is debate on where to store refresh tokens. Storing tokens in browser local storage provides persistence across page refreshes and browser tabs. However, if malicious users manage to run JavaScript in the single page application using a cross-site scripting attack, they could retrieve the token stored in local storage. Obviously, the consequence of that is that they could use it to get a new access token. If you're building some high security application, you might want to look into different options for storing the refresh token but a quick, easy way around this is just to reduce the absolute token expiration time for the refresh tokens. So that way you don't have a refresh token that just survives for say a week or two weeks. Instead, you could make it expire after a few hours or a day. This will reduce the total chance of something bad happening, but you should still do the research on the different potential concerns and alternatives. This is just kind of your intro to get you started. We're going to use local storage in this video because that's what we've been using and that's what is going to allow us to get this built the easiest. Then you could look into other storage options. And really, do you need to stay signed into a website for like a week? In most scenarios, at least in my experience, it doesn't bother me that bad to have to log into a website every time I visit it. And you know, I might visit a website once or twice a day. So if the refresh token expires after a couple of hours, that's probably fine. Another quick thing to note is that in the backend software, you can configure it to keep track of any invalidated tokens. So you use a refresh token to get a new access token and refresh token, and that one you use is no longer going to be valid. This also helps reduce security problems because if that token has been out there exposed in some way and you manage to get a new access token and refresh token, well, any of your previous tokens are going to no longer be valid. So in that situation, you're going to have expired tokens by time and expired tokens by use. Let's run through a quick example of how this is going to work. So you're going to make a post request to API token and you're going to get an access token and a refresh token. You'll save both of these and the refresh token, this is going to be used every so often to get a new access token. So to do this, you're going to use the API token refresh URL. You're going to paste the refresh token. You can see in our example, it only gave us an access token and not a refresh token. And this can work by default if you don't feel the need to refresh the refresh token. However, it can be configured in simple JWT inside of these settings. Rotate refresh token is defaulted to false. So I think what we can do is we can make this dictionary and set rotate refresh tokens to true. So let's go ahead and just try this. So I'm going to take simple JWT dictionary just to start and then I'll just get rid of these first two here. I don't really know where to put this. I'm just going to drop it somewhere and then I'll close this dictionary 
and we're going to delete these two. Those should be the default values, so I don't think I need those in there. And then I'm going to set this to true. And now let's give this a shot. We will head back over to token and we will log in, grab a new refresh token, just to be sure we're not getting anything weird. And then I will visit API token refresh, paste in my refresh token, and we get a new refresh token. And I don't know if you noticed, but this does end in a different value, just to confirm that it is indeed a different refresh token. So then you could basically refresh your access token and your previous refresh token. However, the refresh token we just had should still work to get even a new refresh token. So that goes back to the settings here. You can blacklist after rotation, set that to true. And some of this is going to require some changes aka migrations to the database. So I'm not gonna worry about that for right now. Main thing I wanna know is that we can use the refresh token to get a new access token and a new refresh token, which we can. Just know that the previous refresh tokens can still be used until they expire, which I believe is the default of one day. Another thing you should know is that this signing key comes from the secret key, which is in our code somewhere so secret key right here this we checked into version control which you normally will not want to do however you can refresh the secret key we talk about this in a lot more detail in the back end course of mine however as this is a front end course i want to worry too much about it until you're ready to go into production and at that situation you're going to want to remove the secret key as to not give people the ability to generate their own tokens using this value if it's open source. If you have a closed source application, then yeah, whatever. It's not the end of the world. All right, so we got the back end figured out. Now let's worry about the front end. I can think of two ways of doing this. So we're gonna do the first one, but I'll share a second one with you. So we're basically going to have a loop that will just execute every couple minutes to get a new access token and refresh token. As long as this happens more often than the access token expires, you should be good. So assume your access token expires every five minutes, you could have this loop execute every three to four minutes. That way we're always having a new access token and we don't have to worry about the user getting kicked off and having to log back in. This seemed the easiest to me and that's what we're going to do. The second option is to make requests like normal until you hit a 401 unauthorized meaning your access token has expired, and that is when you will get a new access token with the refresh token. Then you will re-execute the original request. So this is actually three requests. The original, which is 401 unauthorized, then getting a new access token, and then repeating the original request. And this would all be done automatically behind the scenes, so it's not gonna disrupt the user experience for the user and we're only making requests for new access tokens when we absolutely need to. So let's get started with that first option, which is the loop. You can try the second one if you wish. So here we are in our code and we have this saying our long-term goal was to use the refresh token. Well, we're finally there. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have a use effect and this is how we're going to make that fetch. Now this is going to need to be imported from React, so use effect. And we've done use effects about a thousand times, but this is going to take a function and this is going to have an empty dependency array, so it executes only once. The looping part is going to be done inside of here using a set interval. And this is set up pretty similar to use effect where we pass in a function as an argument. And the second argument here is going to be how often this executes. So we can just do something like 5,000. This is in milliseconds, so it's going to be five seconds. Now we're not going to want to leave this at five seconds when we're done, but it's important for testing so that we can be sure this is working. And now in here is where we're going to make the fetch. So let's first define the URL and this is going to come from the base URL which we will import. So import base URL from dot slash shared and this is really just the URL, nothing crazy. And now we will say plus API slash token slash refresh. So that's where we want to go. And it looks like I need to import this with curly braces because it's not a default export. So it'll look like this. Okay, so now let's say fetch, pass in the URL, dot then. This is going to take a function and we will have the response here. And here we will return response.json, and that's a function call. And then another dot then, this is going to have a function 
where the response.json will be stored in a variable called data and we will console log data. All right, so that is our entire fetch. Hopefully that looks good, except we're not quite done because we have to include the object which will have the method headers and body. So we will start with the method which is going to be post, then the headers which is going to be an object. And all this is going to have is content type being application slash JSON. And then lastly, we will have the body. This is going to be json.stringify and pass in an object here. What's the body going to have? The only thing we're going to need to include is the refresh token, which is going to come from local storage dot refresh. Whew, that was a lot. All right, so this is the entire fetch request, but there's a lot here, so let's just go test it out. Let's visit a page that doesn't require authorization and we'll take a look at the console. We currently have something in local storage and it looks like we are getting a new refresh token, but assume we didn't have something in local storage. So we'll just say local storage .clear. You can see we're now getting a 400 bad request and the refresh field is required. So you can take a look at any of these requests and you can see this. So the payload is actually empty. So we obviously don't want to have this problem. So what we'll do is we'll check to see if we have a refresh token. And we're gonna do this inside of the loop here. So if local storage dot refresh, and then we'll just wrap everything inside of the curly braces. And this is also really great because if the user intentionally logs out, we will clear the refresh token and then we won't be executing this function over and over again. So now it should only execute if we have a token, which we currently do not. So let's try it out. We will log in, hit log in. And now we are getting what we expected in the terminal, which is a new refresh token. And you can see the last few characters here are changing each time. So far we are golden. What we do now is we just store that in local storage. So we'll just go from data and say local storage dot access is data dot access and local storage dot refresh is data dot refresh and we will no longer need this console log and then last thing you would just set this to a more appropriate amount you can calculate an amount out here if it's easier so let's go ahead and say const minutes and we're going to take a thousand milliseconds times 60 seconds per minute. And what we'll actually do is just call this minute. And down here, we could just say minute times five. So minute times five, or actually we'll probably wanna do a couple minutes less, so minute times three. So it should execute every three minutes. And it should already be the case that we are logged in for state, but what the heck, just to be on the safe side, set logged in. Uh, and I'm gonna actually move this into then here, and set this to true. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to visit our site, wait around, make sure it works as expected and that I stay logged in, but overall we should be good at this point. All right, there our refresh finally showed up here. So a few changes I'm going to make is first, I'm going to define a function and this will just be called refresh tokens. And by defining this function, I can invoke it immediately rather than having to wait for this time to elapse for the first invocation. So I'm going to take all of the code that's defined inside of the set interval. So all of this here, cut this and move it into this refresh tokens function. And now down here, instead of having this inline function, we can just call refresh tokens and I can call it once immediately right here by saying refresh tokens. So now it'll be invoked immediately instead of waiting three minutes in this case. Last change I wanna make is increasing the lifetime of the access token from the backend settings. I personally think the default of five minutes is a little aggressive, but you can adjust it to whatever you like. But inside of our simple JWT, I'm going to add access token lifetime to 15 minutes, and this is going to be imported. So from date time, import time 
delta. And now you can adjust the front end accordingly, and I just think having a higher number here is going to reduce the chance of potential issues. And if you're not on an app that needs ultimate security, you could probably increase this number higher. That's all I got in this video. I'm sure there's lots of ways to do this, so this might not be the most perfect way, but at least get you going in the right direction. And hopefully now you have a better understanding of access tokens and refresh tokens. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. I think we're going to be building our registration page. So that'll pretty much conclude this last section of logging in. And I'm really excited to see that. So see you then.